Okay. So how many of you have built a plugin or submitted to WordPress repo? Good. I have, and I'm happy to you know uh, call upon our next speaker, uh, who is among many things a uh, member of the plugin review team, uh, and he's going to talk about common mistakes, right, that plugin developers do uh, when submitting the plugins to the repo. So let's welcome Luke on the stage. Hi, everyone. These are all of my slides. And, you know, have you noticed this? It must be AI, do you think? Because it's, it's really accurate. And if you don't mind, I just thought, I'm just going to mumble. And I just want to see. I was just curious. Thanks for indulging me. Um, Geraldina, that was a great talk and very high energy. I don't know how I'm going to follow that, but we don't have time for Q&A today. So actually, if you want to just throw at me some heckles and vibes and questions and jibes while we go, then um, please feel free to just interrupt me and I'll repeat your question. Um, I'm looking at you, Tom. Okay, so. Hi, I'm, I'm Luke. I'm a member of the plugin review team. So, who here's a plugin author? Oh, today is going to be a bit of a technical talk. There's going to be some code on the screen, so get ready for that. Um, does anybody have a plugin in the plugin review queue right now? Great, that's really good. Uh, the answer is no, nobody seems to, so it uh, looks like I've done my job. Um, I joined the plugin review team because I felt that, in general, developers in WordPress uh, could use a, a little more DevRel in their lives. You know, WordPress could, I, I was feeling like WordPress could do a little bit more for developers, a bit more for plugin authors. And so I did what we should all do when we're feeling a uh, little maybe disappointed with how something's going or how something could be improved, I volunteered to help t try and improve it. So um, that's why I'm on the plugin review team. And uh, what we do is when you submit a plugin to WordPress.org, it has to be reviewed. We check for security vulnerabilities, we check for guideline violations. We're trying to get people to stop some of these uh, dark patterns that you sometimes see in plugins, you know? And so we check for this sort of thing, make sure the plugin works, doesn't break your site. And that's a great thing because I think in general, lots of people feel a, uh, lots of WordPress users feel a lot of trust for the WordPress plugin directory. You know, it's pretty safe to install any plugin that you got from WordPress.org on your website. And so that's our job. And we get a lot of plugins sent to us for review. And the, the truth is that it takes about three or four weeks before a plugin typically passes on average. Now you get some authors who are just sensational, some people who really have been doing it a long time and know their stuff, and they might get through with just a couple of passes. But more often than not, uh, we're talking about maybe five, six back and forth emails with plugin authors to try to get them across the finish line. And because of that, I thought, well, why don't I do a talk where I just go through what some of those back and forths commonly are? Because there is a lot of stuff that comes up that's always the same, you know what I mean? So that's what this talk is about. So let's get right into it. Trademark violations. This is quite common. I, I reckon maybe like one in 10 plugins that you submit um, will inevitably have some trademark violation. And sometimes it's something that you wouldn't expect. Uh, what can and what can't you do? So here you can see in my examples, the, the word app store, you may or may not know, is actually a trademarked term by Apple. So you can't have App Store in your plugin name. So it's always good to do a little search 
uh, if you're creating a new business uh, around a particular plugin name, around that name, and you're going to go and buy the domain and things like this, if it contains an already trademarked term, we can't accept it. So we prefer more generic terms when it comes to naming your app. We won't let you put the name of a different plugin at the start of your plugin name. We don't want anyone to be confused, right? So you can't say WooCommerce Payment Gateway. Instead, you say Payment Gateway for WooCommerce. That structure, the for other plugin, is the sort of standard terminology. And uh, that's how we prefer you do it. This one we see a lot of. So typically, why would you make a plugin to integrate with some other service? All right? Maybe you're integrating with I don't know, Google Fonts, or maybe you're integrating with whatever SaaS flavor of the day it is. So if you're integrating with another service, maybe you're calling an API, we're going to notice that you're doing an external call in your plugin code. And that's allowed, that's totally fine, but it is required that you include that in your readme file. So in your readme, it's really good to just put the terms of service and the privacy policy of the third party services that you use. Some people like to use like an analytics service or something like that. Of course, it's gotta be opt-in for the user for that. But if you're using services like this in your plugin, include the terms of service and privacy policy. I've gotten through with no heckles or questions, which I guess that's a good thing. Plugin tags. <laughs> so the tested up to, uh, you know what? There is a, a website, there's a documentation page on WordPress that goes through your readme.txt and main plugin file that shows you everything that you need in there properly. But we see this a lot, is people will put the tested up to version and it's the plugins version. And but what we actually want is the version of WordPress. I've tested up to version 6.4, for example. Um, and then sometimes we'll see the um, readme.txt and the, and the plugin header. They'll have different versions of what is the stable tag. I've done this before, too. I'm like, OK, I've got to get out version 1.0.2. I'll update my readme and forget to update my plugin. And that sometimes results in a mismatch. Licensing is another one. Make sure you're using the correct GPL license string, or that will cause a problem. And actually, while I'm at it, um, Gagan reminded me this, of this one yesterday, is the, the slug that you're using for your plugin, it's good practice to name your main plugin file that slug. This should be the same as your, your slug.php essentially, is your main plugin file. All right. Internationalization. We see this one a lot. I saw it yesterday. Uh, when you're translating a string, which is a great thing to do, you're going to use underscore underscore function or underscore e, or like in this example, escape HTML underscore underscore. And sometimes, understandably, people don't want to put that literal string in as the second argument for their plugin slug. It makes sense on a certain level to just, let's just make that a variable, and then we could change it if we needed to or whatever. But actually, that's not permitted. And the reason why is because a lot of translation tools, the tooling that we use internally with WordPress.org and other um, translation tools like Poedit, I think it is, they use these underscore functions to pick up all of the strings in your plugin, and in that sense, the plugin slugs actually do matter. They do make a difference. And because these tools that we use don't actually run any PHP, it's just string matching, you need to have the literal string of your plugin slug as the second argument of your translation functions. Sanitizing and validating is another big topic, which I will refer you to WordPress.org for. Um, we see, this is the main thing we see, sanitizing and escaping. Lots of people miss the escaping. Um, they, they'll do like escape HTML for an attribute. Uh, so I'd encourage you to just look at all of the escaping functions available on WordPress.org. Uh, 
Learn about WP, K, I call it WP Kisses. Other people call it WP KSES. What do you call it? Kisses? Yeah, well, let's call it Kisses. That's cute. I like it. Um, learn about WP Kisses as a function or WP Kisses post. Lots of times, and I'm guilty of this, people just choose to ignore nonces because it's kind of a pain to implement. But the reality is if you're ever taking any post data uh, or server data, we're going to require a nonce. So you just have to do it. Sorry. Um, unsafe SQL calls, make sure you're using WPDB prepare correctly. Uh, you don't want to include any variables in your SQL statement except for the table name. And prefixes. So don't use a two or three letter prefix even. You need at least four letters in your prefix. That's important. And then try to be consistent. Sometimes plugins will use one prefix you know, half of the time and another prefix the other half of the time. Um, so you know, try to be consistent in that as well. And that's it. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>